The Peru national football team is organized, since 1927, by the Peruvian Football Federation FPF to represent Peru in international association football. The FPF constitutes one of the ten members of FIFA's South American Football Confederation CONMEBOL. Peru has won the Copa America twice and qualified for FIFA World Cup finals five times last appearing in 2018. It also participated in the 1936 Olympic football competition and has reached the semi-finals of the CONCACAF Gold Cup. The team plays most of its home matches at the Estadio Nacional in Lima, the country's capital. The Peruvian team is well known for its white shirts adorned with a diagonal red stripe, which combine Peru's national colors. This basic design has been used continuously since 1936, and gives rise to the team's common Spanish nickname, La Blanquiroja, the white and red. Peruvian football fans are known for their distinctive cheer Arriba Peru, Onward Peru. Peru has long-standing rivalries with Chile and Ecuador. The Peruvian national team enjoyed its most successful periods in the 1930s and the 1970s. In the 1930s, Peru took part in the inaugural FIFA World Cup in 1930 and enjoyed victories in the 1938 Bolivarian Games and the 1939 Copa America, with goalkeeper Juan Valdiviso and forwards Teodoro Fernandez and Alejandro Villanueva playing important roles. In the 1970s, Peru qualified for three World Cups and won the Copa America in 1975, attaining worldwide recognition. The team then notably included defender Hector Chumpataz and the forward partnership of Hugo Sotil and Teofilo Cubillas, often regarded as Peru's greatest player. The national team's all time top goalscorer is Paulo Guerrero, with 35 goals, and its most capped player is Roberto Palacios, with 128 appearances. Under manager Ricardo Garica, Peru earned third at the 2015 Copa America, reached the quarterfinals of the Copa America Centenario, and participated in the group stage of the 2018 FIFA World Cup Finals. History During the 19th century, British immigrants and Peruvians returning from England introduced football to Peru. In 1859, members of the British community in the country's capital founded the Lima Cricket Club, Peru's first organization dedicated to the practice of cricket, rugby, and football. These new sports became popular among the local upper class over the following decades, but early developments stopped due to the War of the Pacific that Peru fought against Chile from 1879 to 1883. After the war, Peru's coastal society embraced football as a modern innovation. In Lima's barrios, football became a popular daily activity, encouraged by bosses who wanted it to inspire solidarity and productivity among their workers. In the adjacent port of Calo and other commercial areas, British civilian workers and sailors played the sport among themselves and with locals. Sports rivalries between locals and foreigners arose in Calo, and between elites and workers in Lima. As foreigners departed, this became a rivalry between Calo and Lima. These factors, coupled with the sport's rapid growth among the urban poor of Lima's La Victoria district where, in 1901, the Alianza Lima club formed, led to Peru developing the Andean region's strongest footballing culture, and, according to historian Andreas Campomar, some of the most elegant and accomplished football on the continent. The Peruvian Football League, founded in 1912, held annual competitions until it broke up in 1921, amid disputes between the member clubs. The Peruvian Football Federation FPF, formed in 1922, reorganized the annual tournament in 1926. The FPF joined the South American Football Confederation in 1925 and, after restructuring its finances, formed Peru's national team in 1927. The team debuted in the 1927 South American Championship, hosted by the FPF at Lima's Estadio Nacional. Peru lost 0-4 against Uruguay in its first match, and won 3-2 over Bolivia in its second. Peru next competed in the inaugural FIFA World Cup in 1930, but did not advance past the first stage. During the 1930s, Peruvian football's first golden era, Peruvians traveled abroad for competition to further develop their football. A notable travel, held in Europe between 1933 and 1934 by the Combinado del Pacifico, a squad composed of Chilean and Peruvian footballers, provided the South Americans with much experience. 
Starting with Ciclista Lima in 1926, Peruvian football clubs also toured Latin America, achieving numerous victories. During one of these tours, Alianza Lima's undefeated journey through Chile in 1935, emerged the Radio Negro, Black Roller, a skillful group led by forwards Alejandro Villanueva, Teodoro Fernandez and goalkeeper Juan Valdiviso. Sports historian Richard Witzig described these three as a soccer triumvirate unsurpassed in the world at that time, citing their combined innovation and effectiveness at both ends of the field. Peru and the Radio Negro odd crowds at the 1936 Summer Olympics, won the inaugural Bolivarian Games in 1938, and finished the decade as South American champions. Subsequent years proved less successful for the team, according to historian David Goldblatt. Despite all the apparent preconditions for footballing growth and success, Peruvian football disappeared. He attributes this sudden decline to Peruvian authorities' repression of social, sporting and political organizations among the urban and rural poor during the 1940s and 1950s. Nevertheless, Peru performed creditably at the South American Championships, earning third in Brazil 1949 and Chile 1955, and only narrowly missed qualification for the Sweden 1958 World Cup Finals, losing over two legs to eventual champions Brazil. Successes during the late 1960s, including qualification for the Mexico 1970 World Cup Finals, ushered in a second golden period for Peruvian football. The formidable forward partnership between Teófilo Cubillas and Hugo Sotil was a key factor in Peru's triumphs during the 1970s. Peru reached the quarterfinals in 1970, losing to the tournament winners Brazil, and earned the first FIFA Fair Play trophy. Historian Richard Henshaw describes Peru as the surprise of the 1970 competition, showing flair and a high level of skill. Five years later, Peru became South American champions for the second time when it won the 1975 Copa America the then rechristened South American Championship. The team next qualified for two consecutive World Cup finals, reaching the second round in Argentina 1978 and the first group stage in Spain 1982. Peru's early elimination in 1982 marked the end of the side's globally admired, flowing football. In spite of this, Peru barely missed the Mexico 1986 World Cup finals after placing second in a qualification group to eventual champions Argentina. Renewed expectations for Peru were centered on a young generation of Alianza Lima players known colloquially as Los Patrillos, the Colts. Sociologists Aldo Panfici and Victor Vich write that Los Patrillos became the hope of the entire country. Fans expected them to qualify for the Italy 1990 World Cup Finals. The national team entered a hiatus after its manager and several of its players died in a plane crash carrying most of Allianz's team and staff in 1987. Peru subsequently only came close to reaching the France 1998 World Cup Finals, missing qualification only on goal difference, but would go on to win the 1999 Kirin Cup Tournament in Japan sharing the title with Belgium and reached the semi-finals at the 2000 CONCACAF Gold Cup contested as an invitee. Qualification for the FIFA World Cup Finals continued being an elusive objective for Peru during the early 21st century. According to historian Charles F. Walker, player and discipline problems marred Peru's national team and football league. Troubles in the FPF, particularly with its then-president Manuel Berga, deepened the crisis in Peruvian football. FIFA temporarily suspended the country from international competition, in late 2008, because the Peruvian government investigated alleged corruption within the FPF. Nonetheless, Peru succeeded in winning the 2005 and 2011 Kirin Cup tournaments, and earned third place in the 2011 Copa America. In early 2015, businessman Edwin Oviedo became FPF president, succeeding Berga, whom two years later faced charges of racketeering, wire fraud, and money laundering in a football corruption trial in the United States. The FPF's new leadership appointed Ricardo Garica as Peru's manager in March 2015. Under Garica, Peru achieved third place in the 2015 Copa America, reached the quarterfinals of the Copa America Centenario, and participated in the group stage of the Russia 2018 World Cup Finals. <laughs> Kit The Peru national football team plays in red and white, the country's national colors. 
Its first choice kit has been, since 1936, white shorts, white socks, and white shirts with a distinctive red sash crossing their front diagonally from the proper left shoulder to the right hip and returning on the back from the right hip to the proper left shoulder. This basic scheme has been only slightly altered over the years. Peru's kit has won praise as one of world football's most attractive designs. Christopher Turpin, the executive producer of NPR's All Things Considered news show, lauded the 1970 iteration as the beautiful game's most beautiful shirt, also describing it as Retro even in 1970. Miles Corman, football reporter for the New Republic, commended Peru's kit as one of soccer's best kept secrets. Rory Smith, chief soccer correspondent for the New York Times, referred to Peru's 2018 version of the jersey as a classic, with a nostalgic, fan pleasing, blood red sash. The version worn in 1978 came first in a 2010 ESPN list of the best World Cup jerseys of all time, described therein as simple yet strikingly effective. Peru's first kit, made for the 1927 South American Championship, comprised a white and red striped shirt, white shorts and black socks. At the 1930 World Cup, Peru used an alternate design because Paraguay had already registered a similar kit with white and red striped shirts. The Peruvians instead wore white shirts with a red collar, white shorts and black socks. The team added a horizontal red stripe to the shirt for the 1935 South American Championship. The following year, at the 1936 Berlin Olympics, the team adopted the iconic diagonal red sash design it has retained ever since. According to historian Jamie Pulgar Vidal Odolora, the idea for the design came from school football matches in which colored sashes worn over the shoulder would allow two teams wearing white shirts to play against each other. Peru wears as its badge the emblem of the Peruvian Football Federation. The first badge, presented in 1927, had a heater shield design with the country's name and the federation's acronym FPF. Eight different emblems followed, with the longest-lasting design being the modern French escutcheon form emblazoned in the team's jersey from 1953 until 2014. This design had the Peruvian flag at its base, and either the country's name or the federation's acronym at its chief. Since 2014, the badge has a retro-inspired heater shield design, with the entire field comprised by Peru's flag and the federation's acronym, surrounded by a gold-colored frame. Eight sportswear manufacturers have supplied Peru's national team. The first, the German company Adidas, supplied the team's kit in 1978, and again between 1983 to 1985. The FPF have also signed contracts with manufacturers from Brazil, Penalty, 1981-82, Canada, Power, 1989-1991, Italy, Diodora, 1991-1992, England, Umbro, 1996-1997, 2010-2018, and another from Germany, Puma, 1987-1989. The team has also been supplied by three local firms: Calvo Sportwear (1986–1987), Polmer (1993–1995), and Wallen Sport (1998–2010). Since August 2018, the Ecuadorian Marathon Sports produce Peru's kit. Topic: <laughs> Stadium. The traditional home of Peruvian football is the country's national stadium, the Estadio Nacional in Lima, which houses 45,000 spectators. The present ground is the Estadio Nacional's third incarnation, renovated under the Alan Garcia administration. Its official re-inauguration, 24 July 2011, marked 88 years to the day after the original ground opened on the same site in 1923, to celebrate the centenary of Peru's independence from Spain, Lima's British community donated the original Estadio Nacional, a wooden structure with a capacity of 6,000. Construction began on 28 July 1921, overseen by President Augusto B. Laguilla. The stadium's re-inauguration on 27 October 1952, under the Manuel A. Odria administration, followed an onerous campaign for its renovation led by Miguel Dasso, president of the Sociedad de Beneficencia de Lima. The renovated stadium boasted a cement structure and larger spectator capacity of 53,000. 
Its last redevelopment, in 2011, included the construction of a plaque covered exterior, an internal multicolored illumination system, two giant LED screens, and 375 private suites. A distinctive feature of the ground is the Miguel Dasso Tower on its northern side, which contains luxury boxes renovated in 2004. The Estadio Nacional currently has a natural Bermuda grass pitch, reinstalled as part of redevelopments completed in 2011. Previously, the FPF had installed artificial turf in the stadium for the 2005 FIFA U-17 World Championship, making it the only national stadium in Conmebol with such a turf. Despite the synthetic grounds rating of FIFA Star 2, the highest certification granted to artificial pitches, players accused the turf of causing them injuries, such as burns and bruises. Peru sometimes play home matches at other venues. Outside the desert like coast region of Lima, the thin atmosphere at the high altitude Estadio Garcilaso de la Vega in Cusco has been described as providing strategic advantages for Peru against certain visiting teams. Other common alternate venues for the national team include two other grounds in the Peruvian capital. Alianza's Estadio Alejandro Villanueva and Universitario's Estadio Monumental. The national team's training grounds are located within the Villa Deportiva Nacional sports complex in Lima's San Luis district. Since 1981, the complex is managed by the Peruvian Institute of Sport. In 2017, following Peru's qualification for the Russia 2018 World Cup Finals, the Peruvian Football Federation announced the creation of a new complex, the Center of National Teams, in Lima's Chaclacayo district. The new complex will contain six training grounds for both the male and the female squads, including the senior and the youth sides. Supporters. Football has been the most popular sport in Peru since the early 20th century. Originally largely exclusive to Lima's Anglophile elite and expatriates, and secluded from the rest of the city, football became an integral part of wider popular culture during the 1900s and 1910s. Over the following decades, Augusto Legua's government institutionalized the sport into a national pastime by promoting and organizing its development. Consequently, the national football team became an important element of Peru's national identity. According to the historian Carlos Aguirre, nationalist fervor spiked during the qualification phase for the 1970 World Cup finals, because the revolutionary government of General Juan Velasco Alvarado tied the national team's success with the alleged cultural, social, and psychological changes spurred by the country's new political project. Peruvian football fans are known for their distinctive cheer Arriba Peru. Onward Peru, unabating popular chant Vamos Peruanos, Let's Go Peruvians, as well as for their use of traditional Peruvian musica criolla to express support, both at national team games and at club matches. Musica criolla attained national and international recognition with the advent of mass media during the 1930s, becoming a recognized symbol of Peru and its culture. The national team's most popular anthems are Peru Campeón, a polka criolla Peruvian polka, glorifying Peru's qualification for the Mexico 1970 World Cup, and Contigo Peru, a vals criollo Peruvian waltz that newspaper El Comercio calls the hymn of Peruvian national football teams. Peru's unsuccessful World Cup finals qualification attempts, from Mexico 1986 until Russia 2018, cemented the fans' nostalgia for the 1970s golden era and increased the popularity of Peru Campeón, the Estadio Nacional disaster of 24 May 1964, involving Peruvian supporters, is cited as one of the worst tragedies in football history. During a qualifying match for the 1964 Olympics between Peru's under-20 team and its counterpart from Argentina, the Uruguayan referee Angel Peos disallowed a would-be Peruvian equalizer, alleging rough play. Spectators threw missiles from the stands while two fans invaded the pitch and attacked the referee. Police threw tear gas into the crowd, causing a stampede. Trying to escape, fans were crushed against the stadium's locked gates. A total of 315 people died in the chaos, with more than 500 others injured. Rivalries The Peru national football team maintains prominent rivalries with its counterparts from neighboring Chile and Ecuador. 
The Peruvians have a favorable record against Ecuador and a negative record against Chile. Peru faced both rivals in the 1939 South American Championship in Lima, which also marked the first time that Peru faced Ecuador in an official tournament. Peru won both games. Peru also defeated its rivals during qualifying for the Argentina 1978 World Cup, directly eliminating both teams. The Chile Peru football rivalry is known in Spanish as the Clásico del Pacífico. Pacific Derby. CNN World Sport editor Greg Duke ranks it among the top ten football rivalries in the world. Peru first faced Chile in the 1935 South American Championship, defeating it 1-0. The football rivalry between Peru and Chile, partly a reflection of the geopolitical conflict between both neighboring states, is primarily a result of both football squads vying for recognition as the better team in South America's Pacific coast as their football confederation is historically dominated by countries in South America's Atlantic coast. The two countries traditionally compete with each other over the rank of fourth best national team in South America after Argentina, Brazil, and Uruguay. They also both claim to have invented the bicycle kick, Peruvians call it the Chilaca, while it is the Chilena in Chile. The rivalry between the Ecuador and Peru football teams is rooted in the historical border conflict between the countries dating back to the 19th century. In 1995, after the brief Sanepa War, Conmebol contemplated altering that year's Copa America group stage to prevent a match between the two sides, but ultimately did not. According to cultural historian Michael Handelsman, Ecuadorian fans consider losses to Colombia or Peru an excuse to lament Ecuador's inability to establish itself as an international soccer power. Handelsman adds that T, he rivalries are intense, and the games always carry an element of national pride and honor. Topic: Players. Topic: Current. The following players have been called up for the friendly matches against Ecuador and Costa Rica on 15 and 20 November 2018 respectively. Caps and goals are correct as of 20 November 2018 after the match against Costa Rica. Recent The players listed below were not included in the current squad, but have been called up by Peru in the last 12 months. Notable A report published by Conmebol in 2008 described Peru as traditionally exhibiting an elegant, technical and fine football style, and praised it as one of the most loyal exponents of South American football talent. In 2017, Argentine manager Ricardo Garica described Peruvian footballers as technically sound, physically strong and adaptable, adding that their adaptability resulted from Peru's diverse geography. Peruvian players noted in the Conmebol report as true artists of the ball. Include forwards Teofilo Cubias, Pedro Pablo Leon and Hugo Sotil, defender Hector Chumpitas and midfielders Roberto Chale, Cesar Cueto, José del Solar, and Roberto Palacios. Cubias, an attacking midfielder and forward popularly known as El Nene, the kid, is widely regarded as Peru's greatest ever player. Chumpitas is often cited as the team's best defender. Witzig lists him among his best players of the modern era and praises him as a strong reader of the game with excellent ball skills and distribution, who marshaled a capable defense to support Peru's attack. El Gráfico, an Argentine sports journal, described Cueto, Cubias, and José Velázquez as, collectively, the best midfield in the world. In 1978, before Cubias' appearance, Teodoro Lolo Fernández, a forward nicknamed El Cañonero, the Cannoneer, held the status of Peru's greatest player, due to his powerful shots, marksmanship, and club loyalty to Universitario. Fernandez participated as a key member of the Radio Negro team of the 1930s, along with Alejandro Villanueva and Juan Valdiviso. Fernandez scored most of the team's goals, his partner in attack, the gifted playmaker Villanueva, odd audiences with his acrobatic skills. 
Goalkeeper Valdiviso had a reputation as a penalty stopper with exceptional athleticism. In 1972, teams representing Europe and South America played a commemorative match in Basel, Switzerland, for the benefit of homeless children. Cubias, Chumpataz, Sotil, and Julio Bailon played in the South American team, which won the game 2 0. Cubias scored the first goal. The teams held another match the following year, at Barcelona's Camp Nou, with the declared intent of fighting global poverty. Cubias, Chumpataz, and Sotil again participated, with Chumpataz named South America's captain. Each of the Peruvians scored in a 4-4 draw, which South America won 7-6 on penalties. Managers <inaudible> 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 A total of 59 managers have led the Peru national football team since 1927 including multiple spells separately, of these, 36 have been from Peru and 23 have been from abroad. Sports analysts and historians generally consider Peru's most successful managers to have been the Englishman Jack Greenwell and the Peruvian Marcos Calderón. The former managed Peru to triumph in the 1938 Bolivarian Games and the 1939 South American Championship, and the latter led Peru to victory in the 1975 Copa America Tournament and coached it at the 1978 FIFA World Cup. Three other managers have led Peru to tournament victories. Juan Carlos Oblitas, Freddy Ternero, and Sergio Marcarian each oversaw Peru's victory in the Kirin Cup in Japan, in 1999, 2005, and 2011, respectively. Soon after forming Peru's national football team, the FPF invited Uruguayan coaches Pedro Olivieri and Julio Borelli to manage the squad. Olivieri received the FPF's first appointment, for the 1927 South American Championship, due to his prior experience managing Uruguay. Borelli became the national team's second manager, for the 1929 South American Championship, after some years of refereeing football matches in Peru. The Spaniard Francisco Bru, Peru's third manager and first World Cup coach at the inaugural tournament in 1930, previously had been Spain's first manager. The FPF next appointed the national team's first Peruvian coach, Telmo Carbajo, for the 1935 South American Championship. The team's manager since 2015 is the Argentine Ricardo Garica. Managers that brought outstanding changes to the Peru national team style of play include the Hungarian Georg Orth and the Brazilians Didi and Tim. Orth coached Peru from 1957 to 1959. Sports historian Andreas Campomar cites Peru's 4 1 thrashing of England in Lima as evidence of Orth's positive influence over the national team's offensive game. Victor Benitez, Peru's defensive midfielder under Orth, attributes the Hungarian with maximizing the team's potential by accurately placing each player in their optimal positions. Didi coached Peru from 1968 to 1970 and managed it at the 1970 FIFA World Cup. Campomar attributes Didi's tactics as the reason for Peru's development of a free flowing football style. Placar, a Brazilian sports journal, attributed Tim, who managed Peru at the 1982 FIFA World Cup, with making Peru a team that plays beautiful, combining efficiency with that swagger that people thought only existed in Brazil. Topic: <laughs> Competitive records. Topic. FIFA World Cup Peru has taken part in the World Cup finals five times. The Peruvian team competed at the first World Cup in 1930 by invitation, and has entered each tournament at the qualifying stage since 1958, qualifying for the finals four times, in 1970, 1978, 1982 and 2018. Its all-time record in World Cup qualifying matches, as of 2017, stands at 42 wins, 36 draws and 69 losses. In the finals, the team has won five matches, drawn three and lost ten, with 19 goals in favor and 32 against. Peru won the inaugural FIFA Fair Play Trophy, awarded at the 1970 World Cup, having been the only team not to receive any yellow or red cards during the competition. Peru has the peculiar distinction of facing the future FIFA World Cup champions during the tournament's finals phase. Luis de Souza Ferreira scored Peru's first World Cup goal on the 14th of July 1930 in a match against Romania. Jose Velasquez scored Peru's fastest World Cup finals goal, 
that is, that scored soonest after kickoff, two minutes into the match against Iran on of June 1978. Jefferson Farfan is Peru's top scorer and fifth overall top scorer in CONMEBOL World Cup qualification, with 16 goals. Teofilo Cubias is the team's top scorer in the World Cup finals, with 10 goals in 13 games. During the 1930 competition, a Peruvian became the first player sent off in a World Cup. His identity is disputed between sources. Peru's Ramon Quiroga holds the unusual record of being the only goalkeeper to commit a foul in the opponent's side of the pitch in a match at the World Cup Finals. Copa America Peru's national team has taken part in 31 editions of the Copa America since 1927, and has won the competition twice in 1939 and 1975. The country has hosted the tournament six times in 1927, 1935, 1939, 1953, 1957 and 2004. Peru's overall record in the competition is 52 victories, 33 draws, and 57 losses. Peru won the Fair Play Award in the 2015 edition. Demetrio Neira scored Peru's first goal in the competition on the 13th of November 1927 in a match against Bolivia. Christian Cueva scored Peru's fastest Copa America goal 2 minutes into the match against Brazil on the 14th of June 2015. Three tournaments have featured a Peruvian top scorer, Teodoro Fernandez in 1939 and Paulo Guerrero in 2011 and 2015. Fernandez, the Copa America's third overall scorer, was named best player of the 1939 tournament. Teofilo Cubias, voted the best player in the 1975 competition, is the only other Peruvian to win this award. Peru earned its first continental title in 1939, when it won the South American Championship with successive victories over Ecuador, Chile, Paraguay, and Uruguay. This marked the first time that the competition had been won by a team other than Uruguay, Brazil, or Argentina. Peru became South American champions for the second time in 1975, when it won that year's Copa America, the first to feature all ten CONMEBOL members. Peru came top of their group in the first round, eliminating Chile and Bolivia, and in the semi-finals drew with Brazil over two legs, winning 3-1 in Brazil but losing 2-0 at home. Peru was declared the winner by drawing of lots. In the two-legged final between Colombia and Peru, both teams won their respective home games 1-0 in Bogotá and 2-0 in Lima, forcing a playoff in Caracas that Peru won 1-0. <laughs> <laughs> CONCACAF Gold Cup Peru competed in the CONCACAF Gold Cup's fifth edition in 2000. Peru participated, along with Colombia and South Korea, as that year's invitees. The Peruvian team's overall record in the tournament is one victory, one draw, and two losses. Israel Zuniga scored Peru's first goal in the competition on 14 February 2000, in a match against Haiti. Roberto Palacios, the team's top scorer with two goals in four matches, received a spot in that year's team of the tournament. Comprising the competition's 11 best players, Peru progressed past the North American tournament's first stage, despite not winning any of its matches, as the second best ranked team in Group B behind the United States. Peru next defeated Honduras 5-3 in a heated quarter-finals match that ended a minute early due to a pitch invasion by irate Honduran fans. Colombia defeated Peru 2-1 in the semi-finals, in a match that included an own goal from Peru's Marcial Salazar. Olympic Games Peru's senior side has competed in the Olympic football tournament once, at the 1936 Summer Olympics in Berlin, Germany. The multiracial 1936 team has been latterly described by historian David Goldblatt as the jewel of the country's first Olympic delegation. It had a record of two victories, scoring 11 goals and conceding five. Teodoro Fernandez scored Peru's first goal in the tournament in the match against Finland on 6 August, and finished as the team's top scorer with six goals in two games, including Peru's only hat trick at the Olympics. The 1935 South American Championship in Lima acted as the qualifying stage for the 1936 Olympic tournament. Uruguay won undefeated and Argentina came second, but neither took up their Olympic spot because of economic issues. 
Peru, who had come third, duly represented South America. The Peruvian team began the competition with a 7-3 win over Finland, after which it faced Austria, managed by Jimmy Hogan and popularly known as the Wonderteam, in the quarter-finals. After the game ended 2-2, Peru scored twice in extra time to win 4-2. Peru expected to then face Poland in the semi-finals, but events off the pitch led to the withdrawal of Peru's Olympic delegation before the match. Topic. Team records and results The Peru national football team has played 610 matches since 1927, including friendlies. The largest margin of victory achieved by a Peru side is 9-1 against Ecuador, on the 11th of August 1938 at the Bolivarian Games in Colombia. The team's record deficit, 7-0, occurred against Brazil at the 1997 Copa America in Bolivia. The Peruvian player with the most international caps is Roberto Palacios, who represented the country 128 times between 1992 and 2007. Second is Hector Chumpataz, with 105 appearances. Jorge Soto is third with 101. The most capped goalkeeper is Oscar Ibanez, who played for Peru 50 times between 1998 and 2005. Second is Miguel Miranda with 47 appearances. Ramon Quiroga is third with 40. The team's all time top goalscorer is Paulo Guerrero, with 35 goals in 91 appearances. He is followed by Teofilo Cubias, who scored 26 goals in 81 appearances, and Jefferson Farfan, with 25 goals in 86 games. Teodoro Fernandez, with 24 goals in 32 games, holds the best goal per appearance record out of the country's top 10 scorers. Claudio Pizarro scored Peru's fastest goal, less than a minute into the match against Mexico on 20 August 2003. Peru's current captain is forward Paulo Guerrero. Midfielder Leopoldo Baserto was the team's first captain. Defender Hector Chumpataz held the Peruvian team's leadership position for the longest time, between 1965 and 1981. Forward Claudio Pizarro had the second longest term as Peru's captain, between 2003 and 2016. Other notable captains of the national team include Ruben Diaz (1981–1985), Julio César Uribe (1987–1989), Juan Reynoso (1993–1999), and Norberto Solano (2000–2003). Topic. See also. Peru national football team in discipline scandals Peru women's national football team Peru national under-17 football team Peru national under-20 football team Peru national beach soccer team Peru national futsal team Peruvian Primera Division Sport in Peru Bibliography <inaudible> 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 Notes and references equals 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 notes <laughs>